ourselves, we rest ourselves. Lord, for one more time, Lord, one more time that you allow us to gather, Lord. You allow us to gather together, Lord, to sing the Lord's praises, to worship the Father through Jesus, his Son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, for your shalom. Father, we Shabbat you tonight, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Father, we come to worship you, Lord. We come to give you thanks, Father, for taking us through another week, Lord. We, Father God, say this is the day that the Lord has made. Father, we come tonight to rejoice, to give you thanks, and to open up our heart, Father God. In these last days, Father, pour, pour upon us, God. You said, as we seek you, Lord, we will find you. As we give our hearts to you tonight, God, all our breath, all our being, Father God, everything in us, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Help us to find this rest, Lord. We come with a spirit of repentance. Yes, Lord. Father, forgive us, Lord, for anything that I have, Father, to follow our eyes, our ears, our words, wherever we, Father God, may have um, judged or reviled, oh God. Anything, Lord, we come, Father God, and ask you to wash us in the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Praise you, Father. Be with us in word and deed tonight, Lord God. We ask, Father God, that you would just do a new thing. Let it not just be, Father God, a thing of understanding or knowledge, God, but that we would, Father God, know your presence. That we would encounter your presence, Lord. That we would encounter your presence, Lord. That we would encounter your presence, Father. Touch us, Lord. Touch us, Lord, one more time, God, as you have, Father God, uh, taught us, your disciples, God, even as you taught us, Lord, you, Father, taught us to pray as our Father, God. So we come tonight, God, as you are our Father, you are Jehovah, you are Yahweh, you are the beginning and the end of all things, and even now, you are in our midst, oh God, who art in heaven, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us access by the blood of the Lamb, and we, Father God, intercede for those, God, that you will put upon our hearts tonight, Lord, even ourselves, Lord. Yes, Lord, as our, 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 as our Savior, Lord, Jesus Christ, intercedes at your right hand. He has torn the veil, Lord God. Uh, so sure. we hallow your name right now, God. We hallow your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we ask that your kingdom would come. Just one more time, God. One more time, Lord God. Father, open up divine presence right now, Lord with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, even as, Father God, the relatives came, Father God, to Jacob and dream, Father God, where they ascended and descended, Lord God, upon that, that ladder, Father God. Yes, God, may we find that same, yes, God, communication tonight, Lord God. Yes, God, on earth as it is in heaven, Father. We ask even now, God, you will give us, Father God, this night, Lord, Father God, all that we need, Father God, for whatever is coming into our lives, whatever we're going to see, whatever we're going to hear, whatever we need, Father God, to see in reality, oh God, that you will just, Father God, open up our eyes to understand that you would open up our eyes as we seek truth, Father God. You said we would find it, and as it sets us free, Lord, Father God, that we would continually yearn and burn for it, Lord, Father God, evermore, Lord. Yes, God, so we ask you even now, Lord, that you would, Father, forgive us. Anything that needs to be repented of, oh God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those, God, who trespass against us, Father God, because you told us to forgive us, uh, to forgive our enemies and to do good to those who persecute us, oh Father God. Lead us, Lord, lead us not to be tempted by this wicked flesh, oh God, but help this spirit, Father God, in us by your grace to win out, Lord Father God, for we know that the flesh is, That's Father it. God, it's weak, Lord God. So strengthen our spirit right now, Lord. Strengthen our spirit, Lord God. Father, for yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to live, Lord God. Yes, God, with fear and trembling, God, let us make our calling and election sure. We come tonight, Father God. Yes, God, for just, just to be in your presence, Lord. Even now, we give you those divine appointments, those that we may have sowed seeds or, or watered, this week, Father God, and even the week to come, that you will make us, Father God, attractive, O oh Lord. That you will teach us, Father God, how to fish, how to evangelize, God, for those that need to be reconciled and restored, Lord, Father God. For we go through persecution, we go through suffering, trial and tribulation, God. Yes, God, that we may, Father God, be that light to shine, God, to draw all men, hallelujah, unto you when your name is lifted up, O oh God. 
So even now, God, teach us how to pray, Lord. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to seek you, oh, Father God, that we can find you, Father, even to repent, oh, God, knowing that it's just by grace, Father God, that a man would even want to turn from his flesh, oh, God. Help us to have that heart, even as David, to have, Father God, that fear of the Lord, to give us true repentance, that you will hear from heaven, that you will forgive us of our sins, oh, God, and that our lands would be healed, oh, Father God. And that it will be well with our soul. We lift up our brother, Pastor Raul, tonight, Lord God. And all that concerns him, Lord Father God. Every area of his life, Lord. Even tonight, God. That you will just, Lord Father God, pour your Holy Spirit upon him, Lord God. That there will be nothing of self, nothing of flesh, God. And even as he's preaching, that he would preach into himself conviction, Father. Wherever it need be, oh, Father God. May we have an ear to hear tonight, Lord Father God, towards obedience that this will not just be a platform, Lord Father God, of being hearers of your word and not doers. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that even now we can, Father, say as Paul, yes, God, whether in the body or out of the body, Father God, you have taken us up, Lord God, to be into that secret place right now, Lord God. So take us out of self, God, where we would just divinely connect into your spirit, Father God, and just re reveal to us, reveal to us, reveal to us every need that is upon this line, Yes, God, those that were interceding for, Lord, Father, family, friends, whatever it may be, those that are in spirits of addiction, those that are bound right now, those that are discouraged in the faith and the depressed, those that have even grown cold and are losing hope, Lord God, in faith, we snatch them, Father God, from the pit. May you blow, Father God, your Ruach, Elohim, upon them right now, Lord God. Yes, God, and set forth the window, Father God, and light that flame, Lord God. For you said that you will never snuff out a flame and a bruised reed you will not break. So wherever they're broken, Father, may they find healing tonight in the name of Jesus. As we worship you tonight, Lord God, may we worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God, in holiness, Lord God, that we can, Father God, minister with the angels, Father God, and just glorify your name, Lord. So we thank you, Father God. We come against every interference, God, any complacency, laziness, slumber, Lord Father God. We come against it. Help us to be attentive, yes, Lord, in, in all of our uh, faculties right now, Lord. And we just, Father, wherever we fail to ask in this prayer, that you will not fail to grant, Lord. And just, Father, speak. Yes, God, for your servants, listen. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise you, God. You're good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit, we worship you, Jesus. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see the beauty that made this heart. Spend with you Light of the world You step down into darkness Open my eyes Let me see Beauty that made this heart Together, worthy, all together, wonderful. 
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, and all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship. Here I. To bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely and all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Yes, Lord, you are our God. You are our Father, Lord Jesus. You are everything to us, Lord, this time where we are, Lord Jesus. When everything falls down, everything fades away, you never fades away from our lives, O oh God. You always remain with us, Lord Jesus. We worship the God who is alive and well, O oh God, Father. We give you praise, we give you glory, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored, O oh God, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is alive and well. Amen. He is a victorious king over our lives. Amen. 
let's worship god let's give him the best that we are in this place amen Jesus. We serve not a dead God, but a God who is alive and well. We worship you, Jesus. 
you lift the burdens of your people lord jesus today lord jesus i pray i pray lift the burdens of on their hearts oh god on their soul oh god father if there is any burden oh god father lift it up in the name of jesus oh god that they would glorify you lord jesus they will lift you up on the praises oh god father we, pray. we worship you jesus we give you praise We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory, God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Let's surrender our hearts unto the King of Kings right now. Wherever you are, just surrender everything unto, mighty, unto His mighty hands right now. Surrender your burdens unto the King of Kings right now. Just let go and let God reign over over the over the lives our lives right now in Jesus name over our circumstances over our situation let him reign right now over, over us we worship you Jesus we give you praise oh lord my jesus my savior Lord, there is none like you in all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My
Jesus, the mighty God. We worship you. You are a, you are Savior, Lord Jesus. We worship you. You are our comfort, Lord. You are our shelter, Lord Jesus. You are our shield, O oh God, Father. You are everything to us, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We give you praise. We worship you. Let's say one more time. My Jesus, my Savior, let this be your prayer today, wherever you are. He is my Jesus and my Savior. There is nothing on earth or, or heavens above, only Jesus, only Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing compares to God, Father. The promise that we have in you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us and guiding us, Lord God. The Lord is saying right now, the way he said to Zacchaeus, Make haste. He's coming to your home right now. He's coming to stay in your home right now. Like he mentioned to Zacchaeus, make haste. God is telling us he's coming very soon. He's coming in this place. He's coming in our hearts with great power and great glory. Let's be Let's make haste and make way for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's coming to reside in us with great power and glory. His kingdom is coming over us. His, coming, his kingdom is coming in our midst. He is coming right now. We worship you, Jesus. We welcome you in our homes, O oh God, Father. We welcome you in our hearts this time, Lord God. We welcome you. 
just like Zacchaeus opened the doors oh God father and we welcome you Lord Jesus we're open with open arms oh God father we welcome you Lord Jesus and his life was changed transformed completely oh God father wherever you enter Lord Jesus the places change oh God father lives are transformed oh God father healings happen oh God father and forgiveness comes in oh God father we pray wherever you go oh God father things changed oh God father we thank you Jesus Lord we make way for you in our in our homes in our lives oh God father Lord change us from the inside out Lord God father we pray that the real real revival come in every people's life we pray father lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit oh God father we pray we give the further time up unto your mighty hands oh God May you speak to us, O oh God, Father. Open up the ears and hearts to hear you, Lord Jesus, clearly more than ever, O oh God, Father. Lead us and guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we make this prayer, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we want to thank God for this wonderful time. And thank God for everyone who are here. Welcome everyone in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So let's go to the Bible. Let's open our Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter number 5. We will hear what the Lord wants to speak to us for tonight. And the word that he wants to speak to us is from Ephesians chapter number 5 mentioning this word many times and even I think during the prayer meeting but tonight we will look what he wants to speak to us through this verse Ephesians chapter number 5 verse number 16 and 17 Ephesians chapter number 5 verse number 16 and 17 it says redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now these two verses and the content in these two verses are related. Paul is saying redeeming the time because the days are evil. Why do we need to redeem the time? The reason is he says the days are evil. And how to redeem the time? But not by not becoming unwise. What is what is unwise? But not becoming, do not be unwise but understand what the will of God is. Redeeming the time is related to understanding the will of God. How? What is the meaning of redeeming the time? What is the, what is the meaning? What is the definition of redeeming the time? And uh, how it is related to the will of God? Okay, this is what it means by redeeming the time. Redeeming the time means... the Redeeming the time, the meaning is understanding what God wants you to do and where he wants you to be in a specific season and time. Write it down. Very important. It say uh, redeeming the time is understanding what God wants you to do. The assignment of God and where he wants you to be. The place of God. The work of God. The assignment of God. Not necessarily ministry. But I will tell you what it is. What God wants you to do. And where he wants you to be in a specific season, in a specific time. When you understand the will, the will is what does God wants me to do now in this season. And where he wants me to be planted in this season. Okay. That is the will of God. And when you understand and do accordingly, invest, invest your Invest your time in the assignment of the Lord. Invest your energy in the assignment of the Lord. And be planted in the specific place where God wants you to be. That means you are redeeming your time. Are we together until now? Now, let us come back to that verse. Ephesians chapter number 5 verse 16. It says, Paul is saying now, redeeming the time. Now, do you understand what is redeeming the time? To be what to be where God wants you to be for that specific time and season. And to do what God wants you to do in that specific time and season. Redeeming the time because the reason is you got to do that because the days are evil. Now listen to me. The, the evil 
can manipulate your usage of time that is one of the greatest techniques that is one of one of the greatest while of the enemy to destroy your life how the evil in the world will what manipulate your usage of time stay with me people of god here apart from those on the screen are you there remove your mute and say amen i just want to ensure even as we start people are awake here remove your mute and say amen apart from those on the screen amen amen okay yeah people are there here okay praise god so listen to me it says redeeming your time the reason is because the days are evil the meaning of what apostle paul is saying the revelation of it is the evil can manipulate your usage of time can manipulate your usage of time for example god wants you to be in the place a and what wants to do wants you to do something but what the evil will do what the devil will do is divert you to be up in in a place b and give you a different assignment and when you are doing that assignment heaven has no focus on what you are you are doing heaven has no business with what you are doing because you are not redeeming your time evil is manipulating your usage of time the devil is manipulating your usage of time he's placing you in a place where god has no focus on heaven has no business to for for that work that you are doing for the place you are in hallelujah hallelujah many times when i go and pray for people in meetings after the meetings i see a man with, who is 35 years old with two kids there with a wife and he is working as a hotel manager in a hotel and then when i start to pray for him the script of heaven comes in front of me and by the utterance of heaven i understand that the man was not supposed to be a hotel manager till now he was supposed to be a voice to the nations but he is now a hotel manager and trying to earn money and gather money for the for the 30 years of his retirement or 40 years of his retirement that is what he is doing that is what he is doing he the heaven had ordained him to be a prophet to the nations but here at the age of 35 he is doing something that that was not that was not ordained by god a place where god did not have any business for him to be but wh why did he go there there were there were evil planted there were evil direction given to him there were people sent by the devil to manipulate him to take up that route to take up that way and now at the age of 35 at that age of 35 heaven had a picture of him him being a prophet a voice that will lead people to repentance but here he, he is laboring in something that god did not wanted him to be in and investing his time and energy in something where he was not supposed to be there that that is the evil that has manipulated his time redeeming the time listen to me redeeming the time because the days are evil understand what is the will of god and do not be unwise we got to understand listen everyone where and what we are supposed to do in this specific time and season by not letting evil manipulate the time the usage of time hallelujah hallelujah when i pray for a person and the person comes oh brother god has blessed me i have a very big business and this and that but inside he is empty when i start to pray i see the emptiness in that person and then i locate god did not wanted him to be there the evil has manipulated his usage of time he did not redeem the time People of God need to understand and take this word seriously as a commandment from the Lord. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, do you understand the meaning of what Apostle Paul is speaking? How redeeming the time is related to understanding the will of God? Because if you don't understand the will of God, you cannot redeem your time. You cannot redeem your time. I could have been 
earning money in a big corporate company until now because I had a job, I had a high paying job. But seasons change. And a man who is, you know, I was talking yesterday and praying with someone and I told her, the, the most powerful thing is to humble yourself before the Lord. Is to humble yourself before the Lord. You know what is humbling yourself before the Lord? Every day coming to the Lord and not only by the posture of your body, but in the posture of your heart, prostrating yourself before the Lord. Lying down before the Lord and telling God, I am dust, please. Lord, show me your ways. Forgive me of my sins. Am I, 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 am I aligned with the season? You know, when I started to grow in the Lord, I understood one of the signs of spiritual maturity is not when I have a big ministry. One of the signs of spiritual maturity when my only desire is to be aligned with the voice of God and the seasons of God. Lord, I don't want to be unaligned with what you are doing in my life and on this earth. I want to be aligned with you. Hallelujah. A, a man who is truly a servant of God will not bother about the numbers in ministry, will not bother about how the ministry is growing. What he will strive and labor to attain is to keep himself aligned with the seasons of God, keep himself aligned with what God is speaking and aligned himself with the will of God for a specific season, redeeming your time because the days are evil. Hallelujah. Are we understanding? Amen. If you don't, listen, if you don't use your time wisely, you don't arrive in God's place in God's time, then you, mean, then you are missing God's schedule. If you don't use your time wisely, you don't arrive in God's place in God's time to do God's work, then you miss God's schedule. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. I will come to the later part. There are, I know, I know, even as I am speaking this, we all falter. 100%, maybe if not 100%, 99% of us, 99% of us have not redeemed our time. We have missed seasons. We have missed seasons. That is what, how we are. We have missed seasons. We were supposed to do something, but we were doing something else. And there are some people here who who all their life did something else and now they are slowly slowly coming to the realization oh this is what god wanted and i did not do it and you will say brother i have no you your life is not wasted because there is a hope for even those who did not arrive in god's time at god's place there is a hope through a scripture in the bible okay hallelujah the hope is the restoration of time. You know, many of us use the scripture of Joel, chapter number two, and we say, a restoration in finance, restoration in this, but understand what the scripture is saying. The Bible says there is the restoration of years that the locusts, that the swarming locusts have eaten, eaten, that the consuming locusts have eaten, that the chewing locusts have eaten, and so on and forth, so on and so forth. The restoration of years. The restoration of time. There is hope. Don't don't sit here and listen to me and say, Oh, Apostle Raul, you know, you are speaking and I am wasted my year. Now what to I don't think it will it can come back, but it is there is a procedure of bringing it back. That is the restoration where you have let the evil, let the devil manipulate your time and place you somewhere which was not your place. Are we understanding until now? There is hope, but I will come to that hope. I will come to the solution at the last part of the sermon. But uh, listen to me. First of all, understand how we miss, how we miss God's time and God's purpose. Uh, okay, if you don't use your time wisely, that means you don't redeem your time. You don't arrive in God's place in God's time um, to do God's work. Then you miss God's schedule. Okay, uh, turn with me. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes. Chapter number three. Turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes. Chapter number three. 
And let us read from verse number one onwards. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to gain and a time to lose and a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sue and a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. There are God, if, if you understand God, if you understand this God, this God operates in times and seasons. Okay? And you, 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 you can fall out of alignment with God if you don't align with the specific place and the specific work that he assigns you for that specific time and season. That is what is meaning of, that is what the meaning of redeeming your time is. See, that is what Ecclesiastes is saying. Okay, let me take you to the next verse. You will understand it clearly. Verse number nine, what profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen, now this is the verse, I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. Underline that verse. What what is the profit if a man labors? What is the profit if the man does not understand the God-given task? You are occupied. I understand you are, you are occupied. But are you occupied with what God wants you to do for now? If you are not occupied with what God wants you to do and in the place where God wants you to be, you are not redeeming your time. The evil is manipulating your usage of time. That is the meaning of redeeming your time because your the days are evil. Hallelujah. Let me come again to what I said. I said that the devil is a master to manipulate your usage of time. That is how he will take you away from God. That is how he can bring lack in your life. He can bring sickness. He can bring attack. Because if you, if, if you are in a place doing something where heaven's focus is not there, where heaven's limelight is not there, heaven's investment will not be there upon you. You got to be in a place where God wants you to be for this specific season or time. And to do what God's, God wants you to do. So that heaven can, you can be under, under heaven's limelight, under, under heaven's protection. And heaven can look at you, okay, this guy is doing a task that is assigned by the God of heaven. That is what Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 10 is saying. I have seen the God given task with which the sons of men are occupied. They are operating and aligning themselves with the seasons of heaven. With the seasons that God is bringing in their life. Redeeming your time because the days are evil. Are we understanding now? Okay. Till now. We were thinking, oh, redeeming the time is as much as we can spending time with God. Yeah, you are spending time with God. But are you doing what God wants you to do? The assignment that God has given you. Hallelujah. Are we understanding now what is redeeming the time? Because the days are evil. God, do you believe that God gives tasks to you for a specific time and season with which you have to be occupied? Do you believe that? The Bible says that. Do you believe yes, that you, do. you, you, do, amen. Do you believe that you don't, you cannot do things by your own self. You have to align with what God wants you to do. I will come to that. I, I, I was asking God and God allowed me to share, uh, you know, to explain redeeming the time by the testimony of my life. Uh, I have some years that I, I gave up to the locus. I gave to the locus some years, you know, I, I am. I have arrived. You many people tell me, "Oh, Pastor Raul, you know, 
you are a young man but that is wisdom i know that i am wisdom but still i know that i am a little bit late i am a little bit late i had to arrive here um some years ago but hallelujah but you know what you know what i i understood the hope that god gave me that he could restore my time so god can push me god can push me i will come to that solution at the later part because there is a hope don't say even even people who are 70 years old 75 years old don't say i am old moses was was being used at that age <laughs> the locust ate up the locust ate up his years moses he arrived very late but there was a restoration that started to happen at that age of 75 80 he started to operate in power in an anointing which young people operate yeah hallelujah redeem your time redeem your time understand do not be unwise but be understand what the will of god is that is what is the meaning of ephesians chapter number what 3 verse 15 uh, verse uh, what 16 and 17 Ephesians chapter number 5, sorry, verse 16 and 17. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Let me come back to the explanation once again. Redeeming the time, the meaning of it is understanding what God wants you to do and where he wants you to be in a specific time and season. Because the days are evil, that means the evil can manipulate your usage of time. And then it says, do not be understand what, un, do not be unwise, but understand what is the will of God. So redeeming the time is related to understanding the will of God. That means to understand what God wants me to do now in this season and time and where he wants me to be planted, which place he wants me to be. We, and I, I should be occupied with the God given task in my life. When we understand that we are redeeming the time okay are we understanding now so let me take take you to what i was saying before this that if you don't use your time wisely that means you don't arrive in god's place in god's time and then you may miss god's schedule i have many times spoken on god's time god's schedule from this verse in revelation chapter number one let's go there revelation chapter number one and re let's read verse number 9 and 10. Verse number 9 and 10. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Island of Pat Patmos, hi hi history records that um, uh, Apostle John was taken as a, what do you call it? was taken in exile at that island of patmos was taken in bondage to the island of patmos but he see what he is saying he is not saying oh brothers and companions in tribulation you know i am in the island of patmos you know i don't want to be here but he understood that that season of his life god wanted him to be in the island of patmos he says i am in the island of pa patmos why because of the word of god because of the will of God. Hallelujah. You see that? And for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You, the people who know to redeem their time. You will find one quality in them. That they will never complain against God. They will not call you and say. Oh sister K. You know what? I don't know why I am here. I don't know. Just I am asking God questions. Why I am here? Why I am like this? They will not call you. Call sister K and tell all those things. Hallelujah. They will not complain. They will understand that even though they are in exile in Patmos Island, uh, you know, it's a difficult place, you know that. But they will say, oh, Sister K, you know, I am in, uh, in, in difficulty, but I am here because of the word of God and because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So I, I, I don't have problem. I don't have problem. They understand that they are in a place, even though it's difficult, they, it's it's a God-given task and God-given place. They are redeeming their time by being in that place, in Patmos. Are we understanding now? See, let's go ahead. Verse number 10. Verse number 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now he continues to say, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I have explained this many times, but let me come again. The Lord's day, 
he understood there was a day on which the Lord wanted to meet him. He understood that. Where? In the island of Patmos. Oh, I have met numerous people and they say, you know, brother, uh, you know, I cannot. Why, why do you say pray for half an hour, pray for one hour? I have work to do. I have to earn money. I have to take care of my family. You know, I cannot do, pray for one hour. Now, God wants me to earn money and God wants me to gather up money and this and that. I cannot pray for one hour now. So I said, when you will pray for one hour then? Never? No, no, no. I will pray. I am not saying I will not pray. I will pray. But after I get retired, when I get comfortable and when there is money accumulated all around me, there are piles of dollars all around my bedroom and I will sit in the pile of dollars and I will pray. When the when there is comfort and convenience and security, then I will serve God and labor in prayer. But Apostle John is saying, I am in exile, I am in Patmos, I am persecuted, but I will not miss the appointment of the Lord. I am in the spirit on the Lord's day. Hallelujah. You are wasting your time when you think, Everything will become comfortable, you know. Uh, once I had, you know, accumulating money is a foolishness in the kingdom of God. Do you know that? Do you remember the parable that Jesus said? I don't have time to take you to the scriptures, but that is the parable. Go and read your Bible. Jesus said there was a, there was a rich guy. And once his field produced a lot of, har a lot of crops. He got a lot of harvest. And he thought, let me store all the produce in the storehouse that I have I don't have to work anymore after this and I will have all the produce in my storehouse to just sit and eat of it and relax and not work any longer and then the Bible says in the parable Jesus said God came to him that night and told him you fool what if tomorrow your soul is taken away from you what you will do with all the accumulated money do you understand that Hallelujah. Pastors will not teach you that because I know when I was, I thought I will take mentorship from pastors and all those things. Those pastors told me you got to earn money and save money. I knew that was not the God's assignment for me. That was not, that was not. They will tell you, you got to save and save and save. Some people get, get so mad at saving that even they stop giving to the kingdom of God. They stop buying gifts for their wife and children. They, they will tell, oh, uh, the, the wife will come and tell, oh, uh, honey, you know what? I am wearing this dress from two years. Can't you buy a new dress? He, she, uh, he will say, you know, stop asking and demanding from me. We are saving. Why don't you understand that? Use it for another one year. The color is still there. It has not faded away. Hallelujah. Why? They are, they are saving. They are not. That, that is what the Bible says. You know what, what First Timothy chapter 6 says? Godliness with contentment is a great gain. You know what the context of contentment is? The context of contentment is enough, enough, enough. How much you will, how much you will accumulate? That is, be content. How much will you ac accumulate? <laughs> oh God, that is, I will come to that. That is one of the device of Satan where he will manipulate your time. Where he will manipulate your usage of time by making you labor for mammon. And you, you completely are, you are coming to church on sometimes on Sunday. You are coming to church. But you are completely you are not at all aligned with the God-given task because you are running after mammon. A person is, is, is just wanted to, wanting to accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Many, many people I have met have missed God's time and God's purpose because the devil tricked them into a tradition of accumulating mammon. Stay with me. Are we understanding? The Bible says, redeem your time because the days are evil. Do not be unwise, but understand what is the will of God is. Hallelujah. Are we understanding now? So, Apostle John is saying, Apostle John is saying, here, I am, I am in the island of Patmos. 
he is not saying oh when i get to a comfortable place and god gives me peace all around then i will meet the lord then i will wait on the lord he is saying no right now in this place of persecution in this place of turmoil in this place of exile i was in the spirit and i realized there is a appointment with the lord <laughs> hallelujah in the deepest valley in the in the darkest time of your life or in the lowest position of your life god will come and tell you i have an appointment with you i want to make an appointment with you are you ready to wait on me will you say that time no 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 lord you know what i am facing a financial crunch let things become better after 3 4 years let me earn some money and then i will you are not redeeming the time apostle john is saying i was in the spirit on the lord's day come what may whatever condition i am in i i will redeem my time by working on the god given assignment do you do you understand how much time does it takes to write revelations do you understand that how much time does it takes <laughs> not one hour one hour is far away not two hours not even two days it takes a whole season a whole lifetime of a man for god to give him revelation it took 10 years of the cross bearing in my life of my youth 10 years and there god would was able to produce the teachings out of me hallelujah because when a man understands to redeem time god will make his life a testament that through that testament of his life god can teach his statutes his commandments his the spirit and life his word to the nations of the earth to the nations of the earth hallelujah yes are we understanding people of god after once he grabbed hold of that appointment day and he was in the spirit you know what started to happen oh god the trumpet sound came and in the trumpet sound i was talking about tongues last week and i told you the trumpet sound is the tongue in the trumpet sound the voice of jesus i am the alpha omega the beginning end the first last hallelujah in the original script there is not there is no and there is alpha omega beginning like that that's why i'm saying like that so he he got the revelation of jesus and and we it's not specified how many days he was there getting those revelation because he wrote 22 chapters am i right is that 22 chapters here in revel yes 22 chapters in the book of revelation john had to write i don't know how many months or years he was there to write those 22 chapters he was in the spirit he was in the spirit hallelujah redeem your time so i i just came to that scripture because i wrote down some things through that scripture and example of uh, john if you understand god's will you will not complain and crib about your situations if you understand god's will and redeem your time you will not say oh i am in the island of patmos i don't know what jesus is doing with me i don't know what about this ministry no i i was at the in the island of patmos because of the word of god and the testimony of christ i know there is a purpose that's why i am here there are there are scarcely any people who would call and tell me you know brother raul i did not tell anyone i was going through this but i am just silent i am just peaceful because i know it is god's place that i have to be in the isle, isle of patmos and you know what brother raul even as i am here i god is encountering me in a new way though i am in trouble but god is speaking to me that person understands how to redeem his time he is not complaining and cribbing about his situation many times god will place you in the island of patmos but if you are disconnected from heaven you will say god take me out of it god take me out of it god says no my son no my daughter you know what be silent be peaceful understand just just be still to hear my voice but you are just bombarded with problems and opinions of men no take me out take me out god will wait and place you there and teach you no 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 you have to be a no you take me out take me out at last god takes you out but that taking out is not a blessing for you 
it's a delay for you because you only prayed to take to for yourself to come out of God's place and God's time. Hallelujah. Are we understanding? Redeem your time. Redeem your time. Understand what the will of God is. Hallelujah. Most people don't know God's time and will complain about why I am here, why I am facing this, why I am treated, treated like this, etc, etc, etc. Do you remember the woman, uh, the widow of Zarephath? Hallelujah. You know what, Eli? I don't have time, but you go and refer to 1 Kings chapter number 17. You know what God told to Elijah? God told Elijah, see, Elijah survived because he was in God's time and God's season. Elijah redeemed his time. There is one place where he, where he missed to redeem his time. That is when he was on his way back from the mountain of Carmel. Remember, Jezebel attacked him. There was an error that he made. I will come to that. I will explain you that. How he missed God's time. If we miss God's time, we are not redeeming the time. But Elijah aligned himself with the times and season and did exactly what God wanted him to do and was staying in God's place. There was a season where he had to go in the king's palace and prophesy. He went and he prophesied. There will be no rain except by my word in all Israel. But after that, God told him, now, now your time is up here of your prophecy. What you need to go is go by the brook of Cherith and stay there. The ravens will come and feed you and you will drink water from the brook of Cherith. But you know what? The brook of Cherith dried up and God told him, now your season has ended. This is not the place you got to say, stay. What you need to do, go to Zarephath. Do you see? Do you see the assignment of the Lord for Elijah in different season? He went to Zarephath and God told Elijah, you know what? In Zarephath, I have commanded, I have commanded a widow there to feed you, to provide for you. So the widow was commanded by the Lord. God had told the widow. But when Elijah landed up there in Zarephath, in the, in the widow's place, the widow was gathering stick to eat and die. She was not redeeming her time, not doing, doing something else when God told her to provide for the servant of God. Do you see that? Hallelujah. And listen to me. When she was doing those things which were not from God, evil was manipulating her usage of time. God wanted her to cook food and give it to Elijah. Here she is cooking food to eat it herself and die. When you don't understand to redeem time, depression will attack you, death will attack you. You Do you understand? Because you are not under heaven's limelight, because you are not under God's place and God's time. That is what happened with the widow of Zarephath. And what Elijah said to the widow of Zarephath was not a prophecy, was not a gift of prophecy. It was just a direction or just an exhortation. He said, you know, do what you are doing, you can eat. But first, do what God has told you to do. Make the morsel of bread and bring it to me so that I can eat of it. And when you do, when you redeem your time, that means when you do what God has called you to do, the oil in your jar will never dry up and the flour in your bin will never be used up until God sends rain in Israel. Do you see, when you redeem your time, you will not lack the providence of God. There will be abundance for your needs and for whatever you need in your house. More than that you will have. Why? Because you redeem your time. People, do you know, people don't understand one scripture. Christians don't understand one scripture where it says, man shall not live by what? bread alone but by every word hallelujah but you know what we think we will live by doing overtime in our office my children shall have a great future when i work overtime in the office that is the evil manipulating your time you god has not made your life so difficult to make you in bondage in labor that you work 13 14 hours a day i was in the office you know and there you, people used to work 48 hours continuously. I used to see 14 hours they used to work, get up, go in the toilet, brush their teeth, wash their face, again come, sit and work. You know why? Because the company paid a lot of money if you did a overtime. Hallelujah. 
but i am telling you i was there in that organization for five and a half years and i never exceeded my shift never <laughs> hallelujah never exceeded my shift was of nine hours eight hours working one hour break and i used to go two in the afternoon before it was 11 o'clock that is the end of my shift 10 55 i will log out and and wait to go back to my house to pray because i did not want to overwork hallelujah oh i think there is a new feature on the zoom when i do like this there is a thumb that is coming on the zoom <laughs> hallelujah amen redeem your time we, we we you got to go go back and do this assignment read matthew's chapter number four verse four uh, uh, matthew chapter number four verse four jesus said to satan man shall not live by bread alone but by every word ah, ha, ha, hallelujah you don't have to overwork if you just do you know i did not save anything i did not think about my future but i understood what the will of god is for me to do the will of god for me it was to 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 for me that time was to pray and pray and pray even though i was working so i was praying when i came back 12 o'clock in the night i would spend time in prayer till two o'clock three o'clock i will spend time in prayer i'll spend i did not have a ministry but i will spend time in prayer i was not leading i was not preaching i was not doing any ministry i was just serving in the church lifting up chairs putting wires but i will spend time in prayer that season i will do what god was telling me to do and you see what i did not have to i did not save i did not overwork but still i am alive still you can see me in good health still my needs are been provided why because i shall not live by bread alone but by every word understand the time of the lord and do what god has assigned you to do do we understand that now hallelujah amen so so okay okay listen to me listen to me okay so hallelujah oh my god so you know what you know you need to know when your time is up in a certain place you need to know when the when your season changes in a certain place now for that i think i took a sermon you can refer back to that sermon that signs when your season changes okay so that i will not i will not ponder on that but but there was a time there was a time where where people were jealous in my office of my good work because nine months i got promoted in one of the office and then some of them were jealous of my good work so you know what they did in the office they casted chits chits and they asked they wanted to shift someone to another process so they casted chits and they asked to take a chit and in that chit my name was there so they took me out of the process and placed me in another process hallelujah so okay i did not complain i said whatever is happening lord i give into your hands i went into that process when i went into that process even that process was blessed and that the the next manager the new manager she 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 did not want it but god told me now it's time for you to leave this place it's time and i i put my resignation without finding a job when god told me that i put my resignation in that office without finding a job and there was a 30 days notice period and at the 10 day i i got a job and the job i got was a 300 percent hike of my current salary what god wanted to show me that how financially he could bless me how financially he could so 300 percent hike and at that time these people were saying you are a you are a very good quality analyst we don't want to lose you please take back your resignation and they were pampering me they were telling me trying to convince me but you know i did not stay there i did what god asked me to do now listen to me listen to me while it was five days remaining in my current office and there were two opinions they were asking me they love me and i'm going to a new place god sent a christian man i uh, sorry no 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 i'm sorry god did, the devil sent a christian man to me the devil sent a so-called believer to me so i don't know how i happened to talk that person is like not at all established in his life 
he used to work in an organization he was way older than me like 40 45 years but he was like my friend so i happened to talk with him at that course of time and it was the devil who sent the evil that wanted to manipulate my usage of time so he he called me or i called him i don't remember but we came in contact on the phone call and this man was not stable in his job he went also to england he did not survive there he came back now he came back then he got up a very small job so he was not at all stable in his job and in, in his in his career so i happened to talk with him and when i talked with him you know i told him oh you know what i am going to shift to a new job i got a new job and i got a 300 percent hike this man told me what's the company name i saw i said this 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 abc is the company name and he told me Oh, I gave the interview there. Don't go there. It's my advice to you. When you go there, they will make you work for 13, 14 hours. They will ask you to come on Saturday, Sunday. They will do this to you. They will do that to you. Oh, I went there and they are such rude people. They, the managers are very rude. They will talk to you like this, talk to you. And he completely brainwashed me that you, you, you just don't go there. That's my advice. And it's up to you what you want to do. And then that man told me all those things. I started to ponder. I started to ponder. And then I went into a night prayer. And there was my pastor. Okay. I was praying. I was praying. And the, the, the Lord allowed the pastor to give, give me his word. So then I, I discussed with my pastor. You know, my pastor, what, what? I'm getting this job. And this I, I spoke to this guy who is from our church. And you, even the pastor knows him. And he said this, this, this. Should I join this job or should I refrain? Is it the devil's? The, and the pastor told me the word of God, the voice of God. And he told me, you know what, Rahul, even Joseph was placed in difficult places. If you are chosen by God, you will be put in difficult places. But God will be with you. Why don't you go? Because God wants to bless you with finance. And you are who gets a 300% hike? Can you think about that? You go and take up that job. And God will be with you. When he told me that, I knew that was straight from God and the devil was trying to manipulate me, manipulate me and I took up that job. And in that job, people used to work for 48 hours, brush their teeth in the office, take a bath in the office, sleep in the office. But the my boss and whoever, under whoever I was, they never forced me to work because they knew I was a Christian. Hallelujah. And I had other responsibility. I told them straight away. I have prayer. I have this meeting. I have this church. I have this. I have that. So I cannot overwork. I cannot come on Saturday, Sunday. So and then in nine months, that 300% hike I, I got, it, they, 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 they promoted me and they increased my salary. And my salary, I got a, around 1000% hike. Not double of my salary, 10 times of my salary. Man shall not by bread, live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I am telling you. Hallelujah. So, what I'm why I am sharing that testimony with you is because, is because the devil can send manipulators in your life to give you wrong advices so that they can manipulate your usage of time. Do you see that? They can manipulate your usage of time. I have some things to say, but I just want to jump on I just want to jump on, my God, six points, six points, six ways that the devil can manipulate your usage of time. Write it down, write it down. Six ways that the devil can what? Manipulate your usage of time and trick you into doing something and to place you somewhere where God does not want you to be. The first point is my favorite. The first point, how the devil can manipulate your usage of time is by making you fall in love with the wrong one at the wrong time. The first point. Hallelujah. By making, listen to me, unmarried people, bachelors, spinsters. By making you fall in love with the wrong person at the wrong time. Now, I know, I know traditional Indians and Pakistanis sitting here as per you, the traditional way is to get married at 26 or 27. But that is not the way of God. As per God, a person can get even can even get married at 37 or 38. God's time can be 37 for that person. I know a, a lady I was used to pray for, she was a God-fearing lady. She used to come in my church. And she, she is even a part of our ministry. She, she lives 
overseas not in india and she got the right person at the right time you know when i think at the age of 38 39 and i see her family that god fearing husband and she has a son now well settled in the lord established in the lord because she did not fall in love with the wrong person in the wrong at the wrong wrong time what a blessed family they are in the lord hallelujah amen i hear that testimonies they they she is a woman of faith and I, I also am in contact with the husband. He is a faithful man. They also have a son. And they, have, they are just secured under the wings of God. No lack. Providence is there. Peace is there. Why? Because that lady waited for the Lord. She got married at 38. 38. Many of you, oh, many of the church members start to make you insecure when you don't get married at 30. Oh, I think God is not with her. That's why she is not getting married. Oh, I think there is a curse upon her. That's why she is not getting married. Oh, I think that her character is bad. I think that that is the problem. This is the problem. Throw their opinions to the garbage bin. Throw it to the, to the trash. Wait for God. Wait for God. Wait for the right person. Otherwise, the evil can manipulate. You get pressurized. Oh, that church member, that pastor, this one my mother is saying and then you land up into marrying someone that was not God's and that person is the person sent by the devil in your life to waste your life to waste the time because you did not align in the right time with the right person you did not redeem your time hallelujah are we understanding people of God the pattern that I was introduced when I was 21 years old and the pastors were thinking to make me a leader because I was a potential candidate to lead the church. They, they told me to get married at around 26. They told me to save money. But when I tapped into God's purposes and God's will, it was not God's will for me to marry. It was not God's will for me to marry at that time. And I followed the path of God. I redeemed my time by, by marrying Jesus Christ and building intimacy with him in my young time, in my younger, younger age. Hallelujah. Amen. Aviyan, redeem your time. The first, the first way the devil can manipulate your time, your usage of time is by sending the wrong person or making you fall in love with the wrong person at the wrong time. Are we understanding that? Hallelujah. Listen to me. There are three ways to choose a life partner. Now, now this is what the Holy Spirit told me. I am teaching you. So since I came to the topic, those who are looking for a life partner, there are three steps to look for the life partner. There are three tests and levels that you need to check. The person, if you think that is the prospect person. The first test is the scripture test. The second test is the wisdom and compatibility test. And the third is the confirmation from God. Listen to me now. What is the first one? The scripture test. The second, wisdom and compatibility test. The third is the confirmation from God. The scripture test is so simple. Don't come to me, apostle, pray for me. I want to marry a person, but, but that person is an unbeliever, does not fear God. I cannot pray. It's not straight away by the God. It's, it's straight away, it's not God's will. What to pray for that? You want to seek God's will, but the scripture fails your choice. The scripture fails your choice. Don't come to me to ask God's will. Don't waste my time. It's not God's will. Because do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Or even though he or she is a believer, you say, oh, that person does not even fears God, does not read the Bible. He is not from God or she is not from God. It's, it fails the scripture test. What does the Bible say? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of the sinner, nor sits in the seats of the scornful. Even believers are not believers. So if they fail the scripture test straight away, the person does not align with the scripture, not the will of God. Don't waste your time praying. Oh no, I am fasting. Why you are fasting, sister? Why you are fasting, brother? Oh no, I am fasting three days to know whether that person is from God. You don't have to pass. You, you don't have to fast. I will tell you, it's not God's will. 
don't waste your time that fasting heaven's eyes are not on that fasting because heaven has already revealed the scripture telling you he or she is not from god the first test is the scripture test do we understand that if that person fails the scripture test don't go ahead not the will of god but if the person passes the scripture test he or she is a god fearing woman and believer and historically you have you have uh, investigated with the church okay that person is in the lord the person uh, you know is is faithful in the work of the lord faithful in her life or in in his life that person passed the first test you can go ahead with the second test the second test is the wisdom test what is the wisdom test you need to use god's wisdom you know let me tell you any boy or any girl any man or any woman coming to you and meeting you on the first day and on the second day says i love you i want to marry you don't marry that person because that person is not wise enough to observe you for some days and see what has been told about you and what has been told about your faith is it true and that will only happen by being a friend with that person for some days and observing that person and if the person is hasty the first day you had a date coffee date and the second day i love you i want to marry you here is the ring and brings a ring of thousand dollars to you to don't don't say no say no 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 you are too hasty you are too, they, that person is not matured a spiritually matured person will will not straight away say i love you a spiritually matured person will stay with you and observe you observe your character and when he when that person he or she say sees that okay this person is compatible this person the it, it is verified i see christ in this person i see that whatever was told about her or told about him has been verified by the character i really know it's not a fake thing that is the wisdom and compatibility compatibility test you see that if that person passes the second test then the third test is coming to the lord lord this person aligns with the scripture this person also aligns aligns with the wisdom that you gave me to evaluate him or her now i as per the first and the second test this person has passed i want a rama word i want want a confirmation in my spirit that this person is from you when the lord after these two tests tells you and gives you the word go ahead with that person and marry that person hallelujah do we see that amen but most of us got married married with the wrong person at the wrong time and then that was a tool of the enemy to manipulate our usage of time are we to get a people of god amen listen to me the second one okay let's come to the second one let's come to the second one the second one is the devil can manipulate your usage of time by giving you a job that is not god's will by giving you a job that is not god's will that is where i am coming it can be oh you know they pay they pay uh, what you call 100 dollars per hour for overtime if you if if your 9 hour shift and you work for 1 hour more Hundred dollars they will pay you for overtime, and if you if you do five hours, five hundred dollars a day plus your salary. Oh, it looks like a tempting offer, but if it's not God's will, the devil is manipulating your usage of time. Listen to me. You don't even have to ask God's will. I have been in the corporate from from the age of nineteen for seven to eight continuous years. I have worked in different companies, so I know what I am speaking. i know what i am speaking any job listen to me any job that does not allows you to be a part of the corporate gathering of the body of christ is not god's will hallelujah i have i have done saturday sunday off jobs i have done rotational shifts but i would write in the interview tell them that i want to be flexible i i want you to be flexible with my rotational offs week offs 
because I got a church, so I cannot miss the church. I cannot miss the prayer meeting. I cannot miss the Bible study. So I, uh, those days, you got to be flexible with me. But I will come for the shift after I am completed. If if there is a if, if there is a shift, if there is a prayer meeting eight in the evening on Wednesday, I will I will tell them I eight to ten. I will take a shift of night eleven and work until eight morning. I will go to the prayer meeting, attend the prayer meeting, and then come to work. Don't force me to miss my prayer meetings. A company that forces you, no, 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 no. Oh, miss this, miss that, miss this. You have to come at that time. And that time of your job coincides with your prayer meeting. It's not from God. The devil is taking you out by that job. Not God's will. Are we understanding people of God? Hallelujah. If you know by the Holy Spirit, God planted you in this ministry. Anything that coincides with the time that you have to spend here in the corporate gather gathering of Christ is that that job, that work is not from God. It is taking you out of God's time. The evil is manipulating your time. Are we understanding? People fall into this trap because they don't understand Matthew's chapter number 4 verse 4. That it's not that job that will provide for you, but it's God's word that will keep you and your children and your family. Hallelujah. I know eight years that I worked, I would go to work at 12 in the night. I will go to work, but I will not miss a prayer meeting. If even I, I, I used to be part of revival meetings till 11 and after that I will go to work. If I am late, I will call my boss. Boss, I am late. I am coming in one hour. So the boss and the supervisors got accustomed with me. They knew I was a ministry man. They knew I was a ministry man. So they got accustomed with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. They used to treat other employees in a different way. But me, they used to treat in a special way. You know, because I was in God's place and God's time. You will get God's favor there. You will, get go, uh, you will get the favor of people. You will get the recognition. You will get the money. What does the Bible say? Remember Matthew's, what is that? Matthew's chapter number 6 verse 33. Seek ye first what? The money. Seek ye first the high, high paying job. No, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah. You don't have to think about your bills. You don't have to think about accumulating. Don't think about accumulating money. Don't think about saving money for next 10 years. Don't think about that. It's not God. This God is a God who will make you depend on Him for every day. That is how this God works. Remember the manna in the desert? God told him, don't accumulate manna for the next day. It will get spoiled. But they accumulated. Greedy people accumulated manna. Oh God. And it got spoiled. Because God wants you to depend. The needs, the finances, the day's needs will come for that day, I'm telling you. That's why Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. When you look at a job, when you are working in the office, don't work there to accumulate money for retirement. Don't work there to accumulate. No, that should not be your intention. Your intention should be the kingdom first. Your intention should be God first. You see how rich you will be till the time you are on this earth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe that, say amen, people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The second way the devil can manipulate your usage, usage of time is to give you a job that is not from God. That is the second way. Hallelujah. The third way. The third way. Listen to me now. It's getting deeper. The third way. The devil can manipulate your usage of time by sending you a so-called Christian prayer partner in disguise. Write it. The devil can manipulate your time. The third thing. By sending you a so-called Christian prayer partner in disguise. For example, Apostle Raul, Please pray for me. Apostle Raul, please pray for me. 
please pray for my pain please pray for my finances uh, from 10 years i am suffering please pray for this person i i am thinking of getting uh, getting in contact with this person or getting married with this person please pray for this person or i am thinking of getting in business with this person and and you know she is continue to t tell me and bombard with me bombard me with prayer points and apostle Raul, please pray for with me every day two hours you know two hours i need to come out of it that has been she has been or he has been sent by the devil to sit on my shoulders and to eat my mind she only wants me to pray but there is no faith and obedience he or she is applying in their own life i don't i don't i don't even pray and invest my time with people who don't want to be in the meeting some people oh i i don't have any time to sit in the meeting but i want you to call me and pray for me every day three hours i i'm sorry i cannot pray with you the real ministry that i do is in on this platform that is where i minister and if i'm praying for you and you are not listening to my teachings my ministry my anointing will not work for you in the fullest measure to deliver you out because it's not only prayer 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 you have to sit and listen to the word of god hallelujah yes some people are sent to manipulate your usage of time and you will find from morning until afternoon you prayed for that person and now you don't even have energy left to open your bible and read every day you are praying for that person on phone and the person is giving you sweets. Oh, there is no one like you, Sister K. You care for me so much. One day, two days you miss and say, I am busy. Then she will take away the sweets and give you poison. Oh, why didn't, why didn't you call me? Huh? Why didn't you call me? I was in pain. Why didn't, why didn't you pick up my call? Why didn't you reply me? They, they are sent by the devil to manipulate you will find yourself praying for them after you pray for them you cannot open the bible you cannot do any spiritual activities you are just concentrating on one person i i had this woman who used to she was a good lady but i so many times i told her she wanted to save her brother blood brother the brother was not accepting jesus and she was oh, uh, apostle rahul please please pray 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 for him pray for him. i'm praying for him i'm praying and whole day she used to think about the brother 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 when he will get saved I, I i want to save him i want to bring him you cannot bring anyone to christ it's the job of jesus you don't become jesus you just do the work of jesus and let the holy spirit do the rest of bringing that person to christ and this lady was like i want to bring my brother i want to save my brother and always i used to tell Sister, you have a great purpose. Why don't you shift your focus on the assignment of God and release your brother in God's hand? Why don't you do that? And she would say, no, brother, you also pray. You have anointing. You have this. No, I said, I will not invest my time on one person. There are nations waiting for me. I will do my job. It's not. I'm not saying I will not help that person. But I will help that person in the limits of God. Hallelujah. God can send so-called Christian prayer partners to tell you, Sister K, Sister K, you know, the whole day we need to pray for my, for my relative, for my son, for my brother. You say, I will pray and release in God's hand. I will not get hyper about the situation they are facing. They are so-called Christians to eat up your time, sent by the devil. Are we understanding people of God? That is the third way. That is the third way the devil can manipulate your usage of time. Hallelujah. The fourth way, listen to me. Listen to me. The fourth way the devil can manipulate your usage of time is by keeping you stuck with the wrong church by mind control or by other means. Keeping you stuck with the wrong church, with the wrong fellowship. Hallelujah. I have counseled so many people and I have told them, brother, you know, I respect your church. I respect where you go. but the Lord shows me there is no purpose of yours in that church. You are wasting heaven's time. You are wasting heaven's time. Whenever, you know, our sister told the testimony that when the lady was praying in tongues, the church was shutting her up. Now, brother, you are going in the church. You have this gift of tongues. You can see in the spirit. You can intercede for nations. But when you do that in your church, they are shutting you up. They are shutting you up. Why you are there investing your time there? 
get hold of a of a group get hold of a fellowship if you are a lion walk with the lion don't walk with cats don't walk with dogs walk with the lion where your anointing will find expression to function and where you will receive teachings so that you can grow in your anointing no 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 brother you know what we get coffee in the morning in that church the other church that prays in tongues they ask us to fast but there we get coffee there we have children's there we have sunday school brother there we have six people praying guitar gha, 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 gha. there we have air condition there the pastor you know uh, excites everyone brother <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> the devil is so successful to manipulate you the devil is so successful your season has some people seasons have ended five years ago in that church but they are still sitting in that church still they are sitting in the church you are in egypt and you like the onions and the garlics and the meat of egypt that's why you are sitting there oh god i know people will not like me for saying that but let me preach let me teach that hallelujah amen <laughs> you are sitting in the church because you you have this facility that facility oh you know what brother let me stay in the church i know i know it's god it is not god's will for me to be there i'm just stagnant i'm just dry in that church i have gifts i know what you are saying is true but let me wait for another two years because i want to get the uh certificate church approval for my daughter's admission my daughter i want to admit my daughter to a college and for that i need the reference certificate that i am a member of this church oh god oh god traditions of men traditions of men you are stuck into you don't have faith in god because you depend on certificates you depend on references you depend on this and that oh god hallelujah may god help you and tell you and god even god wants to help you but you are the one sitting there in the church wasting your time wasting your destiny that god asks for you oh god hallelujah church wrong fellowship listen to me is the fourth way the devil the that church you are in fourth way the devil will manipulate you go to the church you speak in tongues you you even you when you give give the word the pastor come here come your brother come your sister why did you speak like that i told you last time don't see you have to tell what i tell you to do you know the church is egypt but you are sitting there wasting your time you know that your holy spirit that is flowing through you is resisted in that church but still you are there wasting your time oh god why don't you come out of there five years ten years some people 15 years in the in the church the church has wasted that time they rather they allowed the devil to manipulate their usage of time till now you should be in the nations you should be you have you should have been an evangelist on the crusade grounds but here you are warming the chairs in the church here you are sitting there and the pastor is telling no 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 till i tell you don't do this don't do that and you like to be controlled oh god hallelujah amen I don't I, I, as a as a leader in the ministry I don't function like that I encourage people even if people want to do something I encourage anyone who calls me from here ask them I will tell I will pray for you do what God has called you to do I will encourage them because that is the job of an apostle to ordain people and send them hallelujah and if anyone comes out of here and has preaches more deeper revelations than me I will be successful my ministry will be successful hallelujah amen are we understanding but don't be in the church in the covering that is egypt you know that is egypt but still you are sitting there oh god i don't know how much my heart is stressing on that much because i know so many people don't listen don't listen to god amen hallelujah shall we go ahead okay if you are with me say amen until now amen hallelujah hallelujah Point number five. Point number five. The fifth way the devil can manipulate your time, your usage of time, is by is by a controlling and dominant family member. By a controlling and dominant family member. Hallelujah. 
I know a person. He was supposed to be now a prophet, a apostle, building churches. But now he is, he is around 50. He has done nothing for the Lord. You know why? Because the wife continues to dominate, dominate him and he just can't, he just can't disobey the wife. Hallelujah. The fifth way, it's a, it's, it's a very difficult situation to get out of it. By a controlling and dominant family member, the devil can manipulate you and keep you somewhere where you are not supposed to be. Genesis chapter number 11, verse number 28. Hallelujah. Please stay attentive this teaching. I have one more point and then we want to go in the prophecy. So please stay attentive for a few more minutes because this is very important. Genesis chapter number 11. Uh, I don't want to read everything but let me read from verse 29. Genesis eleven twenty nine. Then Abraham and Nahor took wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took his son, underline that Terah took his son Abraham and grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son's Abraham's wife. And they went out with the they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans. To go to the land of Canaan. They came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah died in Haran. Genesis 12 verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham. The scripture tells us the Lord had said to Abraham. The Lord had. Many of us believe that God spoke to Abraham at 75. No he did not. He spoke to Abraham at the young age. At a very young age. But what happened is Terah, the father of Abraham, started to dominate the journey that Abraham had to lead. And you see the scripture just before that, the journey was initiated not by Abraham to Canaan. They left Chaldeans. It was initiated by the father Terah because Terah was like, Abraham, you are a small guy. You don't know to listen to the voice of the spirits and gods. I will initiate the journey. So he was dominating. After Terah died, Haran. Haran is, by the way, the land of delay. The land of delay. They were stuck there in delay till the time there was uh, evil manipulating the time of Abraham. Manipulating the time. But tonight, that Terah should die in Haran in Jesus' name. That you will be released to serve the purposes of God and redeem the time because the days are evil. Hallelujah. So that is an example I am using from the scripture where a family member was dominating Abraham, manipulating his time and keeping him stuck in Haran in the land of delay. But when Terah died in Haran, Abraham came to the senses. The Lord had spoken to Abraham. I will make of you a great nation. And he started the journey. I have taken this sermon many times so I will not go into detail. But the, what, what did I say? The fifth way the devil can manipulate your usage of time is by is, is through any family member or whatever who is controlling and dominating you and not allowing you to serve the purpose of God in God's time. Hallelujah. But we pray let that bondage of terror be broken upon the lives of people tonight. Any ancestral spirit or any family relative controlling and making you stuck in Haran be broken, that hole be broken in the name of Jesus. Let's go to the sixth way. The sixth way. The sixth way. Through which the devil can manipulate your usage of time. The sixth way, you know, can you guess what is, what is the sixth way? The sixth way is you yourself. Yourself or myself. That is the sixth way. Hallelujah. How? When we have a strong self, very strong selfish desire through that the devil make makes us to compete and compare ourselves with others so i look at people 
I get jealous. Oh, he got a big ministry. Oh, he, he got a crusade. He got invites. And then I, am, I want to be like them. I am comparing myself to them. I have this selfishness in me. I have this jealousy in me. And I'm comparing. And in doing that, I miss God's time for me. God's purpose. God's unique ministry for me. And try to compete with others. And become like the, them. And do what they are doing. That is the sixth way the devil can manipulate your usage of time. Are we together until now? These are the six ways the Holy Spirit uh, pointed me out to, asked me to write down. But the Bible says, redeem your time because the days are evil. Why? Evil can manipulate your usage of time. Do not be unwise, but be wise. Uh, but be wise by knowing, understanding the will of God. Are we understanding? Now I want to I want to take you to Joel chapter number two. For those people, I want to pray and release a prophetic utterance from the Lord at, at this end of the sermon. I want to pray for those people who who know, even I. Hallelujah. Wasted not so many years, but some years, some time. And I'm telling you. God is a God who restores time. God is the restorer of yours. Hallelujah. That is a supernatural ability, a supernatural power. I don't know what to call it, a miracle that when you wasted 10 years and you did not accomplish that, but something that you do and you start now to do that assignment, what you were not able to accomplish in 10 years will start to speed up. The mighty hand of the Lord will come upon you and you will overrun and overtake the chariots of Ahab. Their speed will come in your life. And that is what is the mystery on the, of the book of Joel. See, I don't have time, but I want to, I gave you how, one assignment of meditating on Matthew 4.4. 4. The second assignment is read the book of Joel. Read the book of prophet Joel, okay? Because I don't have time to go into the whole book because the whole book of Joel has to be read. But you can read it afterwards and meditate on it. Hallelujah. So let us turn to the book of the prophet Joel. Hallelujah. Now, Joel chapter number 2, verse number 25. So I will restore you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. What restored to you, the, not the crops, not the produce, the years, the time. He can restore it back. Hallelujah. That the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. I, I want to speak on the different kind of locust, but I don't, I don't want to speak tonight. Let me uh, end with the prophetic word itself, okay? My great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty so on and so forth but you got to understand when he will restore and to whom he is speaking he is speaking to disobedient israel who allowed the devil to manipulate their usage of time by their disobedience to god where god wanted to them to serve him in the temple they were serving idols they were eating at the altars of other idols they were worshiping at high places they were believing in foreign countries. They were following the traditions of foreign nations. They were wasting their time, but by not doing the will of God in God's time, in God's place. So God says, when you are out of my will, locusts will come and destroy your produce. Many people experience, they say, Apostle Raul, I'm working, I'm laboring, but there is no produce because the locusts are eating those produce up. Why they are eating you, eating that produce up? Because you are not in God's assignment and God's time if you are in God's assignment and in God's place at God's specific time God will cover you and there in the labor of your hands there will be multiplication there will be plenty but since you have wasted your years God is telling you I will restore to you the years how but how that is where you have to read the book of Joel let me highlight some 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 scriptures Joel 1 Verse number 8, lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of a youth. Verse number 13, the same chapter, gird yourself and lament, you priests. 
veil you who minister before the altar come lie all night in sackcloth you who minister to my god for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your god then genesis uh, sorry joel chapter number 2 let's go to joel chapter number 2 verse number 12 now therefore says the lord turn to me with all your heart with fasting and weeping and with mourning so render your heart and not your garment return to the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful hallelujah verse number 15 same chapter blow the trumpet in zion consecrate a fast call a sacred assembly the book of joel is all preaching joel exhorting people to come with repentance to come consecrating themselves to come with fasting to come in sackcloth oh god when you come back to the lord humble yourself and lord tell god i am here in sackcloth i am here in fasting not fasting to get something fasting to repent of my ways to repent of my wasted years when you do that you consecrate yourself you consecrate a fast to the lord you prostrate yourself to the lord you humble yourself to the lord you weep you wail before the lord you repent before the lord that will activate the hand of restoration in your life and then you will see god placing you and giving you your rightful position in his assignment in his work and when you start to work for him in as per his will you will see the years getting restored hallelujah let us pray do you see that do we understand the book of joel restoration will come when you humble yourself before the lord repent before the lord genuinely Oh God hallelujah thank you lord and this is what uh the lord wants to release so i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the lord wants to tell you i will restore to you i will restore to you i will restore to you any of the six ways through any of the ways the devil ate up your years the lord says i will restore to you i will restore to you but return to the lord in sackcloth in ashes and tell god oh lord i have wasted but i don't want to be irrelevant to the kingdom of heaven i want to be relevant lord i want to do your will now please forgive me cleanse me and may you perform your word and restore the years oh hallelujah whatever age you are god can restore what you were what you were supposed to do in your younger age god can restore it and you can do it now when you prostrate yourself consecrate yourself to the lord oh how wonderful god is hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus father we want to thank you for your restoration thank you for the release of your utterance in this place lord let your people and for and now i want to give you a commandment from the scripture as a, as the servant of god redeem your time because the days are evil do not be unwise dear children but understand what the will of the lord is this is the commandment i want to give you ephesians chapter number 5 16 and 17 hallelujah yes lord hallelujah do not be manipulated by the devil oh about the usage of time and spend your time in the wrong place oh hallelujah with the wrong people in the wrong assignment but come out of those places and understand the will of god do not be unwise but be wise doing what god has called you to do not only in re- in relation to ministry but also your job what you are doing and earning for your family god has a specific place It's the assignment do it in god's ways and you will never lack god's supply i remember what the great evangelist that went to china from england said hudson taylor he says he says god's work done in god's ways will never lack god's supply that is what he said oh he had no money no investment but he went by faith to china and he was a, he became a independent missionary and god never failed him god will never fail you if you understand what he wants you to do and do it and be under his covering he will never fail you brothers and sisters in the name of jesus father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and for this gathering oh lord that you will transform the lives of people through this word and revive and restore yours 
through your prophetic utterance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I cover all of us with the blood of Jesus. Give the meetings of the weekend, Saturday, Sunday into your hands. Continue to speak to us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say, Amen. 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 Give a shout of Amen. Amen.